they should turn to you. Because nobody in this entire world can understand your child better than better. And then the second comes to siblings. Because they are also have seen you right through. Okay, husband, wife, they will not understand. So at their worst, they need you the most. And at that time, don't exit. Don't get angry and, uh, and you know, you don't play your tantrums after that. See, there lies the problem. When you start playing your tantrums, tantrums over tantrums, no, at least one person should be sane, you know. We always say in a, in a marriage, at least one person should understand, okay, let's make this thing happen again. Both will go on different directions. Okay, so at their first they need you the most. Each teenager is different. Adjust your parenting style to suit. Do you know that there are parenting styles? You must have googled this just to have a good time with your, with your uh, child. Parenting styles, you know? Never, never want to. Authoritative, authoritarian. Okay, authoritarian. I tell you nothing else. Authoritative. I explain things and I expect responsibility for the child, from the child. Laser fair, uh, permissive, allow whatever the child does. But today, science says that none of the parenting styles are wrong. Different child or different child requires a different form of parenting. So a lot of work from you also is there. Difficult, no? Difficult. Okay? So, each teenager is different. Don't ask your neighbor what your, how that person is doing and apply what you have done to the, your teenager and then uh, I do it on my child. No. No teenager, two teenagers are the same. So, the application of what you are going to you know, do to your teenager is completely different from what other people have done to their teenager. It may work, but worse, it may backfire. Understood? And when it backfires, then you will say, my God, simply I listen to it. At least what you do, you will be able to say, my mistake. But then the, the entire uh, jargon of, uh, of the uh, quarrel goes haywire. By thinking like, now what do I tell that parent who told me this solution? Okay, so this parenting style should change. There are various ways through which these, but, but these parenting styles, actually, if you analyze all of you as parents, you will have different parenting styles. Authoritarian, authoritative, pessimist, uh, permissive, uh, then there is, uh, what do you call that, uh, laser fair, different types. Learn, I mean just go through and, uh, and know about these things. Because with that you can, you can really work with your family a lot. As far as parenting is concerned. Let them have the last word. We never do this. We have the last word many times. Parents having the last word in the family you know, is a is a crash down. But how you should do it? That's the way how to do it. You you nurture the child in such a way that they say exactly the responsible way of which you think the child should go. But get that answer from the child. And then you will find that the child will go to any extent to realize the dream. But if you tell that this is my dream and you have to do it this way, finished. So is it that some form of manipulation part? Manipul yes. But uh, that manipulation is like, you know, you are not manipulating that person. So you cannot uh, say that I want uh, this child to be a doctor, so I want one. I, I do everything so that the child says that I am a doctor. No, that is not uh, what I have said. What I am trying to say is that, that's why you have to understand the capacity, the capability, the aptitude of the child and work from there. You can't
can't work from your mind. You have to get it from their mind. Because remember that every child, although they even have the same set of genes of you and your uh, other spouse, right? Still, the child is different. Okay? Because your grandfather also is working there. Your great grandfather. I'm not talking about the physical. Huh? I'm not talking about physically. The grandfather telling something. Genetic code. Remember, dominant and recessive genes in the Casper. Dominant and recessive genes. That means some you will say, why can I check it? Don't ask this. Ask your parents how they were. So sometimes your your uh, you see, you know, uh, your qualities or temperament, mostly temperament, may not be your temperament. The child's temperament, your child's temperament may not be your temperament, either your husband's temperament or wife's temperament. It could be your grandfather's temperament. Because the genetic code goes in such a manner that it sleeps in one generation, gets up in another generation. That's why one of the uh, one of the greatest uh, this thing, example of this is given by the color of the eyes. Sometimes parents don't have light colors. It is grandmother's eyes that that come, and then you say, that, "Who is this now? Then think about it. Ask. Then you will understand. Okay. So this is all about dominant and recessive genes. This is a total physiological uh, the thing uh, talk that that cannot be spoken over here. Let's uh, get back to this. Involve them in your household tasks. Don't make them as if it's a hotel and you are supposed to do everything for them. Involve them. Every household task, even closing the door, even they are responsible for that. Putting the whole house in order, not just your room. Not, all, not only that person's bed, but also about everything, everybody. Nobody should be considered as a teenager, not be considered that, okay, Baba, you can go, you can do whatever you want. No. Everything will be provided. Okay. So, involve them and get them work out the household tasks. Apologize when, it, when you get wrong. This is something that never happens. We will, because we have a mind, no? Our mind are matured. We will try to tell why and everything and all this thing. No, finally it's your fault. No, sometimes you will understand. Are you sorry? Mood sorry. Say, it's okay. No problem. You don't have any, your whole uh, roof from your house doesn't go if you say sorry. That, that uh, thing, no? Sometimes the more mature, the more uh, uh, even the kind of positions that we have, it's very difficult for us to say a simple word like sorry. And that gives a lot of confidence to the child. Okay? And sorry, saying sorry is not a weakness. It is one of the greatest strengths. Okay? Apologize sometimes. So bend a little. Your uh, rules that you are, my parents never allowed at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, but I got up You can't use this uh, rule. Sometimes you need to bend rules so that somebody can, like you know, there are different changes that take place. Be apt for this. But at, at, at the same time, like you know, don't be so casual that, uh, that you say no rules in my house. If they are in your house, rules are according to your house. Okay, so but you need to sometimes bend a little for your for your children. Okay, like uh, for example, there was a rule in the in a, in a house that nobody should uh, drive uh, bikes, and that was applied to children also. But at that time, that rule was applied because there was no bikes. It was just one bike. Now today we have a house is such that there would be four people with four bites. So different times change. Okay? Give a little bend to your 
we are human resource manager. One of the very important things is that as a parent, you have to make a lot of information available to the child. Like you are a manager of the child, but you are a manager not of, of, of any random people. It's your child, remember that, the flesh of the flesh. Okay, so give a good natural to this child. Give a, uh, like you know, even a, a purview of what the child can do. See, there, there was one mother who, who would always tell me, my child will never be able to do that. And I would say like, okay, do you really think? He would say, I know my child, no? the temperament, the mood, the way the child reacts and all. And that was true. Sometimes this guidance of yours is very important for the child. That is why you have to see how you can how you can channelize your child into, into a resource. Make a resource of your child. See how many of you uh, during uh, when they were children have run after them for different activities, sports, from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock, sports, then one tuition, then uh, school, after school again another tuition, then music, then uh, something else and something else. You were that human resource manager. So that child must have said at that time, no mama I want to sleep. No get up, come on now, go. But because you said that, you have a fine sportsman today in your house. You have a fine musician in your house. You have a fine dancer in your house because you have done, you have put a lot of your resources to make another human resource in your house. So make, be a human resource manager. As a parent, let them look up to you and say that, <coughs> okay, I want to, uh, like you know, I will, I can rely on my mama, I can rely on my dada because they will make all, everything available, what information, so that the child decides, not you. What do you want, Baba? Death. Got it? Okay? So we are human resource management. Acknowledge their strengths. Acknowledge their strengths. Tell me something about the child. Whole list of negatives. Positive is not. Talk more about positives. It makes a huge difference, not, a, not only to the child's uh, this thing, but even you, you and you will start seeing the positive that even the child cannot understand about itself. And finally, the last thing is relate to them. In this relationship between a mother, a father and a teenager, in this relationship, the secret of, of blossoming that relationship is there in the word relationship itself. And that is relate to your child. Don't be a boss to your child. Don't be like you know that kind of person saying, I tell you, you have nothing to say, you have to do it. Relate to the child. Today, <coughs> children are longing for that comfort. Okay, so with that, uh, I'm done. Now I would like to hear from you. It's 7. We have 25 minutes. 7 more. Now we get into discussions. What if negative influence? Now, because now, see, you got the approach. Now I will tell you, apply the approach. How you will apply the approach? First of all, Try to understand that they are they are going through a lot. Okay? Just as they you would also want to them to understand what you are going through. Because every child, old person, middle age is going through a lot. You at your workplace, you are going through a lot. In the same way, the child also is going through a lot, but the child, the teenager is going through a lot. And Teenager is incapable of many times deciding. Dangerous? 
thing, how do you nurture that? That is what is important in what you have said over here. And what I would say is that you cannot start uh, training a teenager during teenage. That choice has to be there right from birth. But sir, as they are growing, you have to keep telling them this. You know how a mother prepares the girl for puberty? How a father, actually the father never prepares, no? <laughs> yeah, but especially a mother. Because I know when we talk about adolescence, we really open up and you know in front of boys you know they are ready to speak about how their mother prepared them for that for the puberty and for relationships everything it, it cannot be start it cannot you cannot start you can't start a revolution today huh? they will leave your homes today i spam and nagai garakosan mujhetras makatras nagachar i don't tell who gave this talk okay so uh, it has to be right from early childhood when they know you know I find it best when parents say that I know what my child is going to choose in life given the chance of of choices between good and bad I know that the child will always search for good but hardly parents can claim this and I tell parents, you don't know your child. And I uh, came to this conclusion that you don't know your child on my own life. Well, my parents did not know me. Father is alone. <laughs> okay? So, what the child does, that's why privacy of a child is another issue which I did not want to speak about, but what I wanted to speak about over here is, um, Father Mervin, this could be another topic, the privacy of a child. Very important to give the child privacy. Okay, because the child is growing, the child needs to be alone, because what is the turmoil that is going on in the mind of the child uh, sometimes they need to settle it within themselves. Only need be they need to speak it out. So the your anxiety should be blessed with what you have already thought them. And it tells when will you live your life? Hello? <laughs> I'm getting different aromas. Biryani, biryani. <laughs> Are they giving one one biryani to all of them? Yeah, we are happy for you. Father, now is such a yeah. the children, I mean the teenagers, they have a different time for everything. Like they want to stay beyond a certain time, like one o'clock, two o'clock. That is the time they want to go to sleep. Yeah, but they are staying in your house, no? Of course. Yeah, I want to explain. See, yeah. They are doing good things, fine, but they want that time, you know, which we would not agree with. Okay. Because the next day they have to go for their yeah. Yeah. So that That's why, you know, this point of responsibility is you have to understand one thing, that whatever you may tell them, they are not understanding it. Because their brain is not yet formed 22, 23, 24, that is the time that the brain is now solidified. You got it? So they are not, even don't take things like, you know, they will say a lot of things to you. Fire was born to you and all that. Ah, we fatur genagar. Try to understand, you know, that this is not what they mean. They don't know to say what they mean. And this you have to understand, otherwise, Diabetes, who will get? Heart attacks and all. Uh, children won't get, you will get. So, survive. Survive all these arrows that will come. But, 
you know, uh, children know that my parent does not like me staying late. They know. So that's why this goes in the education of the child right from beginning. So they should know what exactly my mama will like, my mama would like. And there are, there's a nice thing about uh, parents discussing things with the child. The day the child stops discussing, he will come to know that there is something else cooking. Okay? Yeah, anything else? I will, I will tell you one thing, huh? I will tell all of you one thing. Nobody in the world has understood teenage. Okay? Because people who give talks, you know, sometimes big big teachers and all who give talks, they can't handle their own teenager. Understood? So, very difficult. So that's why I'm telling you, celebrate life. Celebrate life. Because that's the key to your teenager. I have one question here. Yeah, I'll get it. Yes. See the maturity or the privacy that I am talking about is the time that you give the child to its own. I am not talking about going inside the room and uh, locking himself and after three days the child will come out and say, Hello Mama, how are you? I am not talking about that privacy. The privacy that I am talking about is a privacy with responsibility. Yeah, uh, that's what I read when you said it. No? Because uh, many times we are we think that uh, you should not have privacy, I should look at all your checks. Today, husband, wives are having problems with that. What about you and your child? Okay, so that privacy, I don't know, we need to uh, look into this and debate this a little more. But privacy, yes, the child requires privacy. But responsible privacy. Okay, there should be, like I know the parents who, who, who tell the children, see, you can't put, you can't put a, what do you call that, lock, you can't put a lock on your phone. Okay, and that's fine, that's fine. And the moment they get a wrong message, you know, they will delete it. You know why? Because they know it is wrong. The moment they delete it, that means you know that your child is on the, can at least understand that it is wrong. Okay? Very delicate, huh? These this topics are very delicate. Yes. Okay. So today, today this is like one, uh, uh, one thing that three years back we had the same question, but the approach would be different. Because now, every parent would say, no mobile for you. But two years back, every parent only gave the child a mobile and gave the best of internet facilities. Okay? Now we have to uh, visit this problem. What I would say is that, your time for you, his time for himself, and friends also, certain time. So if you can devise this, because I uh, was uh, listening to chats, not chats, uh, a TEDx talk of a teenager. He says, Mama, you can't, you know, spend five hours on the phone and tell me not to use it for one hour. Understood? I don't know how valid that point is, but that's a point that they are making. Tum panai, they will say. That is not the right thing also to be, that's not a good argument also, but but social media has to be curtailed because many times uh, 
there was one once upon a time, one around five years back, there was one student who came to uh, to us and Father Jerome was the principal that time, and uh, said to Father Jerome, I was also there, and he said that uh, Father, we should organize uh, leftover food for the dogs. Next day, everybody brings everything uh, from home, and we'll feed the dogs from the campus. Around 70 dogs are there on the campus. Nobody knows how they came there. Uh, so we asked the question, tell me what your parent ate for uh, breakfast. Today your parent, your mama had breakfast, we asked them, you are thinking about dogs. She had no answer, she went back. She said, I'll feed my own dogs. Okay, so social media, coming back to this point is, we need to to tell the child that for what is social media we still have to find an answer to this and perhaps uh, over uh, over some meetup of yours you may be able to tackle this well because the moment it comes as rules no, children don't like it especially teenagers once you put those those boundaries that's why I told you Sometimes you need to be a little flexible on certain boundaries. But you need to watch how the child uh, loves the company of others. Okay? And sometimes let them be, if they are joyful with their friends, it should not scratch you. You should, you should not feel tickled. You should be happy that my child is happy. But your time is your time. Huh? The time that you need the child to have a family time, that should not be away from. That's why what we do even as a community of priests, we are together. We never take our mobile um, for meals. When we are together, we don't take our mobiles. Mobiles become landlines that time. So they are ringing in our see. At the end, uh, anybody may say, I was trying to contact you uh, for one and a half hour because our half an hour prayer and one hour of our dinner becomes uh, like a time of uh, many people get get a little hyper. I was contacting you, I said, but that's what we are. Unavailable to other life, we are available only to us. So if a family time can can come in. We say that no mobile time. Could help. Could help. Was opening. There was a ninth standard year, a ninth standard girl who uh, went with uh, with Dada for uh, for school. The father dropped the girl, and the girl got down, did not go to the school, went to the uh, to the uh, police station and complained. My father has uh, confiscated, has robbed my phone. Confiscated actually, because exams are coming up. And uh, the father gets a call from the police station. Happened, no? Yes, Won't tell you. Ah, you go on Who said abroad? <laughs> no, you won't. Here, go on. Okay? Because these things aren't happening here. Yeah. So the, the friends, they have their own the morality, no? Yeah. Roots. Like, mostly more non-Catholic friends, very few Catholic friends, one of the Catholic friends, they are non-Catholic. Yeah, then, then they become chota beans suddenly. Okay, I'll come to this. What's the time? How much time do I have? 7.20. 20? 10 minutes. 7.21. 21, 9 minutes more. So coming to this point now, there was one, once uh, a third year student came up to a priest and told my friend is uh, pregnant, which pill should I give? My friend, my classmate, huh? which, how do I clean up? I had the audacity to ask a priest. 
because the priest was teaching criminal psychology and all those uh, things. So, one blind person uh, guiding the other. So, when I talk to the parents, when, sorry, when I talk to my class, especially, I tell them, never consult what to do with your buddies because they are equally ignorant like you. That's why I emphasize on having a mentor. This mentor could be you also. A parent could be a mentor. But also it could be somebody who is outside also. They have to have mentors. Otherwise, but right now what is going on, especially with the orientation that I have spoke about, they are all uh, going towards a different uh, set of uh, rules. And we should be scared about it. Huh? You have teenagers in your house. Yes. So, watch out. One day they may bring those flags in your house. Multicolored. And I'm, okay? No? LBGT. Lesbians, uh, gay, uh, bisexuals, transsexuals, transgender. There are, there is even a college in Goa which has had a union for, the, for them. Okay, these are, these are problems. Yeah, yeah. My father, there will always be a clash of values. When we were young in the 60s, our parents thought of the outrageous in that sense. And they, the biggest water's topic then was the generation gap. Now we are on the other side of the fence. That's the only difference. And uh, they used to find Beatles That's music. That's why we need to understand this what, uh, what you are saying, Freddy. Yeah. They used to think that Beatles music was crazy, like, you know, in that sense. <laughs> they, we think that, you know. Elvis Presley was like. Uh, your generation, Elvis Presley. My generation, Beatles. Beatles, yeah. Guns and Roses, man. Orientation, yeah. Is there also a thing that it could be not just environment that is It could be, it could be. Because it's hormonal, no? Yeah, it could be that. Yeah. So, so in that case, it's not a sickness that no. it's not a problem. No. It is just how it is. No. Yeah. But the problem lies when people are psychologically affected by this problem. Otherwise, it's not a problem. It's somebody's orientation and it's fine. Yeah, but there's a clash between, clash between this. So, 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 but but these, are, these are also highly sexualized times in yeah. that sense. Uh, yeah. like when we grew up, we didn't come across that many images. Mm. Today you cannot open a mainstream newspaper without seeing, you know, a semi yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so having a, uh, pornography rampant and uh, pornography even to the extent of bestiality, that's a problem. It's maximized. Yeah. It's like... It's all over the It's place. everywhere. Today watch uh, Netflix. We may feel that that's one of the best series, but what are the values that are within it is questionable. Yes. You will have to act it out. I say I just spoke to my friend and poor thing, he is into watching all those pornography. How bad their parents must be feeling now. Just say that and go from there. See what happens to the child. Understood? No? You put the child in a deep thought. Never ask directly a child, you are watching pornography, idiot. You don't have to say that. Gently. You have to, it's called mirroring. These are various things, various ways, therapies in which you can talk to your child. It's mirroring. 
And it's not a lie, huh? you don't have to tell this to the priest. I told one story like this just to bring something to notice, you know, of my child. It's not a lie. You are not harmed, you are trying to make things better for you as a parent. They are, this discussion can never get over. After your child crosses teenagers, you will think that I should have done something else. You will always find it. So that's why my point here is that the first slide, do you remember? What is the first slide? No, no, the topic. The topic, build your teenager. Build your teenager so that as an adult, because the child is going through that transition. So as an adult, the child should not be ill-equipped with moral values, with your uh, family uh, values, with divine law and with social law. Should not be ill-equipped. Don't be too busy in your life as to never meet the child. Then I ask, why are you doing this? For my child. But where is your child? Child is somewhere else. And you are somewhere else. When will you enjoy that, the today? When will you have the now? We are always thinking for, for the future, I will do this, I will do that. Today, that's the point. And I think I am uh, out of time now. Because for the concluding remarks, there will be some more time. And 7.30, because your teenagers must be looking at the watch and saying, where is my soup? <laughs> oh yeah, or it could be, I hope they don't end in time. <laughs> because right now they must be clearing things. Even if there was uh, some kind of a mess that they were creating at home. Yeah. You want to express your capability, you want to express uh, your, uh, the dreams that you always had. So why not? You could. But many, I was just spoke to another parent uh, uh, who said that I stopped my, uh, he had a, a small, uh, what do you call it, it's a, a superstore, okay, at a superstore, stopped, gave it to somebody and he said, uh, I'm enjoying myself because there are so many more conversations that I'm having with my children. I'm enjoying them. Okay? I don't want to be judgmental on work, whether you're working or not. not nothing like that. But still, even if you're working, you can make time for children. Father, with due respect, uh, I think the church as an institution has not done enough to tackle two big elephants in the room as far as teenagers go. One is sexuality and the other is drugs. Yes. In our younger times, uh, there was a huge narcotic problem in Bhattis in particular. Today, from the Catholics, it has gone over to the Hindus, to the migrant society and it's really spread. Catholics seem to be coping with it a bit better. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. And when we deal with these issues, there is a certain response of moral panic coming out. So how do we, you know, not be too liberal, too permissive and at the same time not go the other extreme? I don't know. See, the decision of right and wrong now 
and what is happiness and what is pleasure 